Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Lisa and in today's video, we are doing something that has actually never been done before, but you guys have kind of requested for this video. It's kind of like goal planning, goal setting. I wanted to start this, you know, grow with me series because I feel like it's extremely important as part of, I guess, just me. And like, this is another extension of, I guess, a vlog where you're going to be able to see, you know, how I progress. And I'm also mostly doing this for myself because initially, Initially, I was hesitant on posting a video like this, but I feel like by posting this, it might help someone and it holds me accountable to my goals and all of these things for next year. And it'll also be a good way for me to reflect. So excuse the setup today. I don't have my usual microphone with me. So I'm just using my podcast microphone. The other one I usually use for YouTube is actually back at home. So I do not have that on me. So in today's video, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna actually have two main sections. The first section, we're going to go over the things that happened in 2021. I think in order to set goals for the next year, it's first really important to kind of look at the year before and, you know, talk about that before you kind of goal set into the next year, because you'll be able to see what you need to work on, what you did well at. If you want to also do this all together, then, you know, pause this video, go grab pen and paper, and we can kind of work through this together. I don't know how long this video is going to go, but because I do think it is important, I'm just going to kind of go with it and we can plan together. I feel like before I go into the actual categories and ratings, I wrote down a few questions that I wanted to ask myself and answer just so you can have like a little bit of a highlight before we get into the serious stuff. And I think this part is also super important because it helps you practice gratitude and also kind of like allows you to look back throughout the year. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I feel like one year is actually a really long time. And sometimes when I think back to earlier in the year, I'm like, oh my God, that was still in 2021. Once again, this is why this exercise is actually not just important, but also I think just will make you happy and like kind of think about some of the things you did. So the first question that I have is, what did I accomplish this year? In this year, I feel like three main things that I accomplished was I quit my job. So I quit my corporate job. And if you haven't seen a video about me talking about it, I'll leave it right here for you. The second big thing that I did this year was I launched my podcast, hence the microphone. And you can also catch my podcast right here on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And the third thing is I traveled solo alone in Europe. And that was a huge thing because I feel like I was extremely scared to do it before and I also hated it before. So it was actually kind of astounding that I decided to give it another chance and I ended up loving it. So those were the three big accomplishments that I had in this year. The second question is what were my biggest disappointments? I just wrote, in myself, like I was actually kind of disappointed in myself this year, just because I think it's more in my own habits and personal growth. Like I don't think I had enough consistent habits. I don't think I have a very good routine. So I think because of that, it made me feel very just all over the place. And I don't know, that's something I need to work on. And we're gonna go really deep into that later on. The third thing is what did I learn? This year I learned a lot about myself. I think this year I really, really took the time to kind of just like sit down with myself and really grow as a person. Once again, we're gonna go into this a little bit more, but the other thing is also I learned that I love solo traveling. I love working alone. I love being autonomous. I love being free. And I think that's one of the biggest learnings. And I also learned this year to say no a lot. And also more importantly, saying no without feeling bad about it. Because I feel like a lot of the times if I say no out of FOMO or something, I would just like, feel guilty or just have the FOMO for the entire night. So this year I became more confident in saying no, but at the same time, I also learned the things that I would say yes to that would make me really happy. I guess I learned how to kind of distinguish which ones are going to make me happy and like not make me regret my decision. The last one I think is going to be the funnest question is what were my biggest highlights and favorite moments of 2021? The first one is of course, the fact that I quit my job. This was the biggest goal I've ever had for myself. So that was definitely one of the biggest highlights. Obviously the other two that I had mentioned also the solo traveling across Europe and also launching my podcast with my best friend. And then some of the other highlights that I had was I had a goal this year of wanting to go on four boats. And did I hit this goal? Yes, I did. I was so close to not hitting it because I only went on three boats this summer. And then in November, I 
spontaneously decided to go to Mexico and Cabo, I ended up hitting that milestone as well. So we ended up getting the four out of four boats this summer. Anyway, yeah, so we just like rented a few boats or like for the day or whatever, and that ended up being super fun. Next one was I went on a West Coast tour with my family and my friends. I came back to Vancouver in the summer after already being here for six months, but anyway came back here to Vancouver for the summer. I also went to Fernie for the first time and that's where my brother lives now and he's lived there for like two years. So it was actually just really nice that I got to visit and it's such a beautiful place and we got to do so many activities. I also went to Banff with my friends and another highlight was one of my close friends actually got married. So it's also just astounding to me because we're starting to reach the age where people are starting to get married and like people you know and are actually friends with are getting married. So I feel like that's pretty cool. On top of that, I also tried water rafting for the first time. I'm actually a very outdoorsy, active person. I don't know if you guys know that about me, but I got to try water rafting for the first time. Most of these are actually vlogged. So if you wanna see the West Coast tour here, there's one here, there's another one here. And then we also have the water rafting one as well. I also went snowboarding a lot this year and I kind of re-loved, re-loved? Is that a thing? Anyway, I re-loved the sport because I think I forgot how fun it was and I honestly forgot how freeing it felt. So that was another thing that made me um, really happy this year. Overall, I just wanna say about 2021, I think this year's theme was for me to be free. If you guys are kind of new to this channel or the overall brand or you haven't listened to the podcast before, basically I was in a very toxic relationship for about four years. There's an episode about it on the podcast that you can listen to and in the middle of the pandemic in June of 2020, I broke up with my boyfriend. I ended up being single. And honestly, I don't mean this in a rude way. Like he made me unhappy. Well, like kind of that because I've been single before and I've been miserable single. And this time I've just really owned up to it, lived my life. I just never have ever been happier. So 2021 was honestly one of the best years of my life. It obviously started and kickstarted off after my breakup in August, I would say, like a few months after the breakup, it kicked off and I started to become really happy, maybe like August of 2020. And that continued to carry over in 2021. I wanted to bring this up because I think you're going to see a lot of the reasons why when we get into rating how I did in 2021. In 2021, I have broken down these few categories. So if you're doing this exercise with me, just write these categories down. What I did was I wrote these categories on the left, then I wrote a feedback section in the middle, and then on the right, I decided to rate it out of 10. The categories are career, health, finances, relationships, fun, personal growth, giving, and then lastly, spirituality. Starting with the first one, so with career, the format I decided to do this is kind of what I learned in school, which is like two stars and a wish, meaning you wanna give yourself two compliments and then a wish is like what you could do better. And then um, I also decided to rate it out of 10. So basically the overall rating for career that I gave myself was a seven out of 10. I wanted to give myself stars because what really pulled the score up here is obviously me quitting my my job because that took freaking forever. I mean, for me to achieve this goal. So that definitely pulled the ratings up a lot. I started to have more focus in my content, but like later in the year. So you're gonna start noticing on TikTok, YouTube, and on Instagram that I have a lot more fashion content because I think I'm trying to just kind of like niche down a little bit more. Whereas before I feel like I was just doing so many different things. So I'm definitely trying to have more of a focus and I'm also mentally feeling more focused. So those are the stars I decided to give myself. The wish that I wanted to give myself was I wanted to develop better habits and better consistency. So that's why I gave myself a seven because I feel like there's a lot of work that needs to happen in the habits and consistency portion. So going on to the second category of health. So as you guys know, well, if you don't, if you guys are coming from Instagram, you may already know this, but in the category of health, you know, I'm giving myself stars because obviously this started towards the end of the year, but I started to work out more because before in my life, I feel like I'm just very much into eating junk food and I'll diet, but it's never out of like motivation of like actual health. It was more just like an aesthetic, like I want to look better, but it's never because I want to like 
be a healthy person. This started in the end of the year, which is what pulls the rating up a little bit. Overall, the good things that I've started is I started to work out way more consistently thanks to sweat and tonic. Even now without sweat and tonic, I still work out consistently at home. The second thing is I actually started to like eating healthy and I actually started liking that. I also did one month of no alcohol and that was amazing. I'm gonna start cutting down on alcohol as well, but also starting to eat healthy. This really kicked off because if you guys saw one of my previous vlogs, I was trying to do this diet for my gut and I wanna, you know, look into that more, but that made me feel really, really good. And I feel like we should all look into gut health because honestly, it can really change how you feel. And also when I started doing this, I genuinely began liking eating healthy food. Like I never used to be a salad person and now I am. So that was kind of astonishing, but anyway. Six out of 10 because this started later on in the year and I still have a lot of work to do in this aspect because the consistency, I still need a lot more consistency and I also need to stop like snacking to that extent or just like binge eating sometimes or like eating till I'm like really, really full. I need to just learn how to stop when I'm just regularly full, not like about to explode full. I actually started this about last month and it's been going really well. So I need to carry this over, but that's why I don't have like a zero, but I gave myself a six. Okay, so the next category is finances. And overall I gave myself a seven because I really thought that I was gonna be very stressed out after I quit my job. But thankfully I wasn't very stressed out. My job, I'm still doing quite well, self-employed. That was really good. However, the part that I need to do better is I think I need to be better at managing my money this year and also being better at just not spending on so many material things. So I think this year is actually going to be the cutoff of my spending for, I guess like these fun things, especially if it's material and some experiential, but we'll also go into that in a little bit. The next category is my second highest rated category. It is relationships and I gave myself a nine. So what I did well in this category this year was in the beginning of the year, I dated for fun, which you guys heard all the freaking stories on the podcast. I learned a lot about what I was looking for and I finished dating for fun. Then I stopped dating completely. I spent a lot of time with my family and my friends and I really grew those relationships again. So I'm really, really happy about that. For the rest of the year, romantically, I have an absolutely no focus on dating at all and just continue to be focused on my friends and family. So the wish that I could have worked on better this year was being on time with people and also being better at responding. So that's why I docked myself a nine. I only docked myself one point, even though I'm late all the time is because I think like if you kind of just knew how much I internally grew my relationships, I think that just really outweighed everything. Whereas everything else, like the being on time and being better at responding, I wanna put that more towards the category of personal growth. It's not going to taint my relationship score, but anyway. So there's that. The next category is my highest rated category, which is fun. So this year, like I said, I kind of allowed myself to just kind of have it and go off the rails because like I said, this is my first year single. And I think I had so much freedom this year and didn't have to talk to anyone. I just like didn't owe myself to anyone. So I really acquired the freedom I always wanted. I traveled a lot this year. I drank a lot this year with all my friends. I just had so much fun this year. I think I had too much fun, which is why this is at a 10. Basically the wish is balance is key. Hopefully for next year, it's not gonna just be like me having fun all year round. Cause I think that was me this year, but next year we're gonna definitely strive for a little bit more of a balance. The next category is personal growth. And for me, I feel like, you know, this year I've never been so focused on becoming a better person in all aspects of my life. Like all of these categories we are going through one by one. Like I'm working really, really hard at all of these and I still consistently go to things. Therapy. So I've never put so much emphasis on myself. And so that's why I gave myself an eight in this category. Another thing that was actually very pivotal in this year for me was I decided to change my perception of my luck. Because if you guys have watched my vlogs, you will know that I constantly say Lisa luck, Lisa luck, Lisa luck in like the worst way possible. I'm always like, I'm so unlucky. And I think this year, a few unlucky things did happen to me, but 
I am so thankful for those events because honestly, it made me ironically change my thought to believe I'm actually one of the luckiest people on earth. Because of this change of mentality, it is allowing me to be a luckier person. I do believe, and one of the biggest things I learned this year is luck is really how you make of it. And I think that if you are also someone who believes you have bad luck, you can change your luck. I know it's hard. It's like a catch 22. By telling yourself you have good luck, you can honestly generate really good luck for yourself. And I think this was actually extremely important to my growth this year. Yeah, I think personal growth this year was also really big. So I gave myself an eight. And I think the wish that I had and why I docked myself was once again, because of consistency. I think I need to be consistent in all aspects. And a lot of the wishes in all of these categories have always been on personal growth and also, I guess, consistency. Okay, the next section is giving. And this is basically just, you know, like generosity and donating and kind of like philanthropy. So for me this year, I gave myself a seven because you guys definitely don't know this, but every year I actually sponsor a monk in Tibet. So if you guys didn't know, my parents are actually quite boot and we have a monk that we sponsor. We give them like money for, you know, like religious stuff, their living needs and all of that. So I've been doing this every year for many years now. So this has always been consistent. But this year I also decided to host a friends only clothing sale and I donated half of the money towards the charity. It is all clothes I use kind of like my own money to buy, but I decided to give half of it to charity. So I gave myself a seven for that, but I think what needs a lot more work on my end besides like increasing the amount or increasing the number of times I give back is also having more personal involvement because I think right now I do a lot of just like, okay, here's the money, there you go. But I kind of want to do more like actual in-person events. That's kind of why I docked myself points for that one. And then lastly, the category is spirituality. You guys might not have this or this might not be a category for you guys, but this year was also really important to me because it was actually very pivotal for me in terms of spirituality prior to this year, I was not spiritual at all. And then now I feel like I'm one of those people that people make fun of where it's like, oh, she's so into astrology and crystals and tarot and whatever. Okay, that is full on me now. I feel like I've really grown spiritually. I have kept such an open mind. So I give myself stars for that one. The wish that I have is I need to be more consistent with gratitude and just being able to appreciate everything that is around me, everything that is happening and just like looking at everything from from a different lens. So that is kind of the score that I gave myself for spirituality. So I hope you guys enjoyed that 2021 reflection exercise. And like I said, I think that part is super important because if you write these things down, you're able to see really like where you need to work on the most for the following year and also set goals that are smart. So if you guys don't know what smart goals are, smart goals are specific, measurable, achievable, and relevant goals. We'll go through like what I need to work on later on, but the goal portion, definitely keep it to yourself. And my biggest two recommendations is number one, create a vision board. So if you guys want to follow me on TikTok and on Instagram, I will actually be sharing my vision boards on there. I don't have it right now. That's why I can't share it with you, but make sure you follow me on there and you can see how I make my vision board. But essentially you just, you know, go on PowerPoint and you take all the pictures that resonate with you and even some quotes or even some one liners. Like if you want to be like, I want to make X amount of money this year, just like put, I don't know, that amount of money like on your vision board or whatever it is. But when you put all of these things in a picture and put it as your wallpaper, put it as your phone background or whatever, it can really, really help you. Like every time you look at your phone, every time you're on your computer, you can see these things. It will help you give these little cues that you should be doing these things. Vision board is super important. And the second one is for your very specific goals to write them down in the present tense. So for example, if you want to make make a hundred thousand dollars this year instead of writing you know I will make a hundred thousand dollars this year write something like I am grateful for making a hundred thousand dollars by December 31st of 2022. So write your goals all in present tense. And when you read that to yourself, it will help generate and manifest these goals more faster than if you do it in the future tense, because then your brain is going to always think that it's happening in the future. And yes, I am very into manifesting and law of attraction, hence the spirituality stuff. So if you also believe in this, then this is really helpful. Even if you don't just try writing your goals down in the present tense and see what happens and just read it to yourself day after day. 
those are kind of my tips, but going on to the same categories, let's make our goals for 2022. So for 2022 in personal growth, I wanted to kick off personal growth instead of career by growing myself. I think this will help me grow every aspect of my life afterwards. Personal growth, I think everyone should always keep you know, at the forefront, because the more you are confident with yourself, the more consistent you are, the better habits you develop, it will just trickle down into every other category. The first thing for personal growth is I want to become more consistent in all aspects of my life. Like I am a very much sprint, not marathon person, but I am changing that. So I'm even writing down, I am a very consistent person. I'm writing that down. I want to develop better habits. I want to actually have a solid morning and night routine. So those are my goals for personal growth. Moving on to health. I want to continue working out at least three to five times a week. I also want to have a very balanced diet and also eating very healthy and eating until I'm full. And that's it. In terms of finances, I actually want to have a plan. I also want to look over my finances every Monday morning. This is what I want to start in 2022 and also no no big material purchases in 2022. I want to focus on saving this year. Whereas last year, like I said, with the theme of fun and single and all of that, I think last year I went a little haywire with all my purchases and you can see all the reviews of the luxury goods here, but no more for 2022. I mean, I don't, okay, no, no more, no more. Next category is relationships. I still want to be single all of 2022. So I do not want a boyfriend at all. Once again, my focus is on myself and all of my personal growth. So I do not want a boyfriend and I want to continue focusing on my current relationships with my family and my friends. And I think that is it. I think I just want to constantly be a more consistent person on time, thoughtful, grateful, and not take people for granted. I think if I build my own core relationships and build myself, then the right person is going to come along. Okay. So I'm just like in absolutely no rush to get a boyfriend. I will get a boyfriend when I turn 30, but just not right now. The next category is fun. I actually want to dial down the fun this year because I feel like I had too much fun last year. So this year I am allowed to travel, but I actually don't want to spend like I did last time, basically almost two months away. And if I am going to travel for the short amount of times, I do need to have all of my work done beforehand. One of the bigger trips that, you know, we've been talking about is my family really wants to go on a trip. And I don't know how long that one's going to be. Like I said, no matter what trip I go on and no matter what the duration is, my one caveat is my work has to be done. So I think I'm going to hold myself accountable for that this year. Last year, I would just kind of, you know, take it for granted. And I was like a little bit absent on YouTube for a month. So I am going to keep myself more consistent this year. The next one is, you know, in terms of career, I already mentioned this, but I do want to focus on more fashion content and also being more consistent with the schedules. I am hoping that in 2022, the schedule is going to be every Sunday and Thursday. You guys will be able to see a new video on this channel being more consistent on TikTok and Instagram as well. Podcasts, we've always been very good at. We just took a break for the holidays. Podcasts, you should expect an episode every Monday still. We have that one. And then giving, as I mentioned before, before, I want to be more personally involved. So I think a good way for me to get more personally involved this year is actually to ask my friends to go volunteer with me. I think that would make a really, really fun weekend activity. And also that would just allow you to kind of like also get a bunch of other people to help you out and then just keep yourselves accountable and also like go together and it'll just be a fun like giving back kind of weekend activity. And then the last thing is once again, becoming more consistent in spirituality practices. I've actually started meditating every morning. So I want to continue doing that. I do want to continue practicing gratitude. I actually go through a gratitude exercise every morning and every night. So I am going to continue doing that for 2022. So anyway, that was pretty much the entire video for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, especially since this is my first time doing this. If you guys have any questions, make sure you leave it down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.